Did you know that the ICOM IC7300 has got a hidden ability? An ability that I've been using for the last two years. Let me share it with you. My main HF transceiver is an ICOM IC7300. I've had it for about five years now. I love it. It does exactly what I want it to do. It's very economical, actually. And if you're thinking of buying one, then give our guys a ring down at Milton Keynes. they would be more than happy to talk to you and do a deal. Part exchange, of course, if you're interested. Anyway, the IC7300 is great. But I've been using recently a half-size G5RV antenna. Now that antenna is a very popular antenna, it's a great antenna, but it's not easy to match it on all bands. In fact, it can be a real problem. And uh, with the 7300, same applies. It matches it on some bands, but on others. Let me show you my G5RV installation. It's a bit of a lash up. A lot of my antennas are lashed up because they're not there permanently. Although this one I may, I may use over the winter period. But as you can see, let me turn the camera around you can see it's a bit of a lash up the important thing is the line isolator absolutely essential and I'll put it at this end for a very good reason because we want to actually try and feed this antenna as a balanced antenna and Louis Varney G5RV said don't use a ballon use a line isolator and as you can see here it's pretty crude the way it's connected to the 450 ohm load line but it works and for my purpose, it's part of an experiment, and so I'm quite happy with the installation. But I should add that I've also got a line isolator at the other end as well. So I've got two line is isolators. One, because I'm feeding the balance line with coax feeder, and uh, that then gives me a reasonable isolation and a good match. And the other isolator at the other end makes sure that any RF on the coax is isolated doesn't interfere with the transceiver doesn't interfere with the SWR readings yes I don't get first prize for construction I shall probably weatherproof that because I think I'll probably leave that antenna up for the winter maybe I'll change my mind that's the way I work anyway let me now show you how the 7300 copes with the half size G5RV take a look right 40 meters Tune's okay. If you look at the second line up, that is the SWR, so no problems there at all. Let's go to 10 megahertz. No, won't tune that. We go to 40 megahertz. Yes. Tune that, you can see virtually no SWR on there. Let's go to 18 megahertz. Nope, it's not going to do that. Very high SWR on there. Let's go to 21. Nope, won't tune that. Very high SWR on that. Go to 24. No, nope, no jaw there either. Go to 28. Oh yes, tune 28. So it's quite happy on 40 meters, 20 meters and 10 meters. But all the other bands, no joy at all. Yes, it works on some bands, but not others. So let me now show you what I've been doing over the last couple of years. Take a look. Right now, let's change the ATU. We go to set, we go right down to the bottom where it says other, press that. We've got something which says emergency, tuner, we press that, get a warning, we say OK, and it wants us to reboot, so we press that, and it's now rebooting. Now we're in what we call the emergency mode, and the power output maximum power output is limited to 50 watts so let's go back up to 40 meters that 
tune's okay, but we were already okay on 40 meters anyway. Right, let's go to um, uh, 10 megahertz and see what happens here. Yes, now you see it's tuned that. It's tuned that before it wouldn't do that. Okay, we go to 20 meters to 40 megahertz band. We didn't have any problem there anyway, so I don't expect any problem there. No, we've got very low SWR or zero SWR. Now, it wouldn't handle it on 18 megahertz, that's for sure. But yes, it's tuned it. We've got zero SWR. 21, it wouldn't handle either. Let's try uh, 21. Press the tune button. Yeah, it's tuned 21 as well, and it wouldn't do that before. Let's go to 24. Yeah, it's tuned that as well. And let's go to 28, which we didn't have a problem with before. And there we are. So we're now tuning seven bands. We're tuning 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Seven band coverage. Now, first of all, that warning sign that came up on the IC7300 screen when I was switching to emergency, all it said was be careful with high voltages. I think ICOM anticipated that in this um, situation, they might, or the operator might just poke a bare wire into the back of the transceiver and the wire could be laying all over the place. So that was the warning. The warning was nothing about using the emergency um, operation. And in fact, perhaps ICOM got it a bit wrong. Why did they call it emergency? Because quite clearly, the transceiver is more than happy to operate in that state because I've been using it for the last two years. So there's no concern about using it in that particular um, state, in other words, switching to emergency, apart from the fact, of course, that you get reduced power, 50 watts. But 50 watts is a 3 dB reduction. Well, OK, it's noticeable, but is it really that noticeable if it gets you on the bands that you can't otherwise operate on? And some people only operate the rig at half power anyway. So it's a good way of getting the 5RV or any other antenna you have a problem with, it's a good way of getting onto the bands you thought you couldn't cover without the expense of an external antenna tuner. So there we are. I think it's quite an interesting feature. Now, it's not all roses because you're still going to have VSWR on the coax and there will be some loss on the coax. The loss depends on the frequency, the VSWR, and the length of the coax. But you may be pleasantly surprised, at least on some bands. So bear that in mind. It's not all roses. But you'd have the same problem if you had an external antenna tuner in the shack. So, still something to be gained. As usual, thank you for watching this video. Much appreciated. Don't forget to uh, give our guys a ring if you've got any questions about gear that you're thinking of buying and so forth. Or go on our website and order it there. More than happy to help you. Remember, we've been going for 50 years, so we must have got something right. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio, take care, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.